Hey there gang, I'm just going to do a quick little setup video here for this Strat type guitar that showed up. I don't know a whole lot about this guitar. It showed up in a case that looks like a Fender USA from the 80s or early 90s. Um, the neck here has no identifying marks on it. There's no decal, there's no serial number. Those are Shaler tuners, but they seem to be older Shalers. So maybe this was an aftermarket neck put on a Fender guitar. Maybe it's a copy. I don't know. I do know that it needs a setup. First things first, we'll plug it in, see what it does. Volume pot's a little bit. The switch is really stuck. It's been a long time since it's been cleaned. It always amazes me just how far away these things can drift from a factory setup. Um, the action here is pretty high. It's like 5 to 6 64ths on both the outside E strings. And actually just looking at the saddles here, uh, not a great situation for that high E I'm afraid. You can see these bridge saddles, especially the high E string here, they're almost out of adjustment. The screws have been backed out all the way and these are essentially lying flat on the deck of the bridge which is not a normal condition, uh, especially when coupled with the very high action I just measured. And that usually means that the neck has come forward somehow and uh, we'll have to readjust the neck angle by putting a shim in the neck pocket. Or sometimes the truss rod will be so loose that over time string tension has bowed the neck forward an inordinate amount and we'll have to find a way of straightening it. Matters aren't helped much by the angle of this bridge. It looks like someone came along and loosened all the tremolo springs, so there's not very much to counteract the tension of the strings, and that let the back end rise up. I don't care who you are, you don't need that much up pull in your Strat trim system. It ain't a Floyd, boys. So the other thing is the customer said the intonation was sadly lacking, and I can believe it. Um, this should probably improve that slightly, and we might also gain back some of the um, action adjustment if we go ahead and tighten those springs. So that's a good place to start. Someone left a comment the other day asking why I'm always using a manual screwdriver and not an electric one. And it's probably evident, I hope. Uh, it only takes one broken screw to really ruin your day. Especially around the headstock, hardwoods, small screws. You never know, you know, if the pilot holes were drilled to the right size. Old screws that are rusty or brass screws. It's really easy to pop the heads off. And the extra 30 seconds it takes, um, it's it's not a real hassle. I don't mind doing that just to be safe. So yes, these screws seem to have been backed out a ways and the claw itself is not sitting parallel to the front edge of the cavity. It's actually canted a, a bit, which is not a good thing. And these springs are of course flopping around in there. They're also set up in this bizarre configuration and I don't understand why people do this or they'll have the outside springs converge towards the center of the claw rather than just be parallel. I don't... I, Maybe there's a physicist who can tell me in the comment section why this is superior than just having them run parallel. I don't know. So I'm going to screw these back in and pull the back of the bridge down towards the body. Just leave a little bit of space there, just enough for a nice shimmery vibrato effect. That looks better. Oh, and this is kind of fun. Someone's gone and cut a half-hearted window here ostensibly to make string changing easier. Now they've made it so that you can access strings 6 through 2 pretty easily, but the high E string here, it's still obscured behind the plastic. It's the one that you're going to break in performance. You're not going to be able to get that done quickly. So I'll take a second, I'll just extend that up a bit. Make it more symmetrical. There we go. It's much better. It's not included in your usual setup fee, but what are you going to do? See something like that and just leave it? No. It's more functional. Have a look at just how corroded the surface of these frets are. Crunchy. So next I'm going to check the neck relief here. Got a capo at the first fret holding the sixth string down around the body joint and I measure at the sixth fret. I can already tell this is way high and yeah. 
I like around ten thousandths for an electric guitar. That's an acceptable. I mean, you, you can be lower than that, you can be a little bit higher than that. It's a good average. In this case, we're more than twenty-five thousandths of an inch. That's way too much. So here's the conundrum. How many reproduction strat necks have you seen where there isn't a truss rod adjustment at the nut end? What do you think? Am I going to take that neck off and find a truss rod in this guitar? Only time will tell. So just for giggles, I'm going to measure the string length here, the scale length of this guitar. Something's a little bit funny. Just this bridge. Um, the saddles are pushed all the way towards the back here. The, the springs uh, that adjust them are really, really tight. There's no movement left in them. And also the uh, screws are actually extending past the string holes. It made de-stringing this thing a little bit tough. And I got a sinking suspicion. It seems about right. Let's see what it looks like. The 12th fret here, half the scale length. Yeah, it looks a little bit more than 12 and 3 quarters, just a bit. I wonder. Yeah, so that's more like 325 millimeters. So I'm guessing this is actually a 65 uh, centimeter scale length, which would suggest this is maybe an Asian neck put on this guitar. It's just a little bit, it's about a sixteenth of an inch longer than a standard Fender scale. Not much, but just enough. So looking through the mounting screw holes, this thing's only held on by the two outside screws, and that's okay. People do that. It, it functions. It's enough to hold this in place. There are I can see little remnants of pilot holes there, which suggests this whole thing should probably move backwards about a sixteenth or three thirty seconds of an inch. So, you know, like two millimeters um, from where it is, so that we can get better adjustability for the saddles and hopefully intonate this right. It's kind of a bummer, but what are you going to do? So I loosened those trem springs, which I had carefully tightened previously. really interesting. It's got brass inserts. So what? Okay. I guess these were in the wood beneath the inserts. Well, we'll get rid of those. And we'll get the cover off and we can see what's underneath there too. Okay, have a look under here. Well, it's certainly not fender wiring, I don't think. It's old, though. That pot there says DiMarzio. Interesting. I'll see if there's a date code I can decipher. And the amount of oxidation on those pot covers. Yeah, this has got to be 30, 35 years old at least. I've just used my 3 8 inch tapered plug cutter to make a couple of maple plugs for those holes from the uh, brass inserts. I'm just enlarging these holes to 3 8 of an inch. With some glue in the holes I'll put those plugs in there and gently tap them home. You can see that one side there there's already some splits through the end grain which I soaked with some super glue. Just cleaning up the frets. I had a lot of people suggest I look into the Stumac fret erasers for this job, and um, I have actually used them. I went through a set, didn't like them that much, just weren't for me. Um, by the time you get through 20 frets, there's a whole lot of this sort of rubber. It crumbs off and it's kind of gross. So I've just been using micro mesh. It's essentially the same thing. It's an abrasive grit in a rubberized backing, but it's they seem to last longer in my mind. See another one of my expediencies here. I'd rather than tape off the entire board, which is kind of time consuming, for a job like this where I'm just polishing the frets, I'll just use a double uh, thickness of tape and um, put four or five frets at a time and then work my way up the board that way. It just means that I'm not cutting, you know, it gets difficult and fiddly when you're doing the, the frets up near the top of the board and this takes no time at all. So for frets this nasty, I'm starting off with 600 grit 
wet or dry sandpaper just to get the, the real grunge off. And I go through 800, 2400, 3200, and 4000 grit for the micro mesh. And that leaves a good playable surface. I cleaned the board with naphtha, and here I am using some lemon oil to, quote, nourish the wood. We'll break out the little flush cutting saw here and also use a chisel to flush up those plugs. Just getting some contact cleaner in those pots and on that switch. Messy stuff. Working it back and forth, getting it in there. Naturally, when I was cleaning, one of the wires came off. I'm also going to take the time to reflow some of these solder joints here, especially these ground joints on the top. They look pretty dry. I let it heat up and uh, always add some new solder to the old. Let's put a little tension on the truss rod here. I'm going to give it close to a quarter turn, which is actually substantial. We'll see what that does when we put it back together. To make sure the strings are going to run properly relative to the neck, I stretch a thin string between the nut and the saddle and just check the spacing along the edge of the fingerboard. Here I'm marking for the mounting screws. So with strings on here, we'll check the relief and it looks like that truss rod adjustment worked in our favor, but not as much as we need down around 15 thousandths, which means I've got to take the neck off and do the adjustment, which is why repair guys hate this kind of neck. <laughs> I'm adjusting the saddles so the string height and the radius are correct. To set the intonation of each string, I play it open and then compare that with the fretted octave at the 12th fret. If the fretted note is flat, the saddle has to move forward towards the nut. If it's sharp, it has to move back. And there's some trial and error to this. Go back and forth until you get it right. It's time to set the pickup height, and these are pretty far off. I usually um, set them up to the factory spec, which is good for probably 90% of the players out there. It's a good middle of the road measurement. So on a Strat, that is about 3 30 seconds of an inch on the base side and about a sixteenth on the treble. And we measure that by pressing the strings down at the last fret there and measure them from the pull piece to the underside of the strings. Okay, it's all set up, ready to go. For those who care, the action's around 3 64ths of an inch, which is about 0.8 millimeters, which is kind of nice for a lot of people. Still don't know what this thing is. Um, checking out all those DiMarzio electronics. One of them had a code on it. It said 8504, which means that could be, I suppose, April of 1985. That kind of fits in with the amount of uh, oxidation on those things. So, whatever it is, plays nice, it's a good little strat.